Excuse me, little dog. You can just stay up there. Girl Scout cookie sign. Jesus, that fucking Girl Scout cookie sign. Hi right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous Monday morning here in the end times in the ruins of Garfield, Texas on this spectacularly gorgeous soon to be 84 degree Monday, November 25th. 2019, the mid-80s in Thanksgiving week here in Texas, and we wonder why we're so fucked, but I need to get out and just take a sun bath the rest of the day. Uh, this is, I, I am in the middle of perhaps the single worst case of insomnia I have ever suffered in my entire life. I have not slept in four nights. And I'm a little bit suspicious. I, I started putting this CBD oil on my back, you know, on my fucked up shoulder, which is actually a fucked up rib. So right before I go to bed, I've been uh, rubbing, not, not taking it, you know, not eating it, just putting it on my skin. And uh, I, I, I can't imagine, could that have anything, has anyone ever heard about that? I mean, I took two fucking sleeping pills last night. I, I was so exhausted when I went to bed last night. You know, when you're too exhausted to sleep, and what happened last night, for the first time in 20 years, I had one of those sleep paralysis episodes. And uh, interestingly enough, it was the first time in my entire life, you know, I suffered from that shit for over 20 years from sleep paralysis, you know, which was always connected with UFOs and space aliens, you know, which is the reason what the vast majority of these goddamn alien abduction episodes are triggered by sleep paralysis, which is your pineal gland dumping DMT into your brain. So, interestingly, last night, number one, I was not on my back. I was on my side, not on my back. And there was no UFO space alien connection involved. For the first time in my life, I was paralyzed. Anyone who has ever suffered through... So I'm going through fucking sleep paralysis. Uh, just horrendous bouts of uh, insomnia. There's something going wrong in my fucking brain. <clears throat> so I'm just warning you guys, I am either... You know, I, I'm bipolar, so I am either getting ready to head in into one of the single biggest depressions that you guys have ever seen me, or I'm getting ready to launch into a manic episode. You know, I had a mild one when I fell in love with this Doomer chick a, uh, a few weeks ago first manic episode I've had in 10 years, I'm afraid, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I kind of enjoy being manic, so I honestly don't know which direction I'm heading. I'm just sending out a warning that Hambone is getting ready to go one direction or the other. So just be prepared uh, for that, uh, depending on, I need some fucking sleep. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally going crazy. <clears throat> but anyway, <coughs> what did I come here to talk about? This is not a, uh, a depressed collapsitarian whine. It might be a manic uh, collapsitarian. Uh, anyway, but I'm here to do what I do every day here on this absolutely beautiful 84 degree day in late November, and that's to talk about how fucked we are. And this is uh, right here on today's mainstream media coming out of this outfit called The Week, but it was previously published in Washington Post. And we're going to go to the coast of North Carolina 
to see how fucked we are to the outer banks of North Carolina, these barrier islands off the coast of the southeast United States, or anybody who thinks that sea level rise only affects those little brown people over there in Bangladesh. <clears throat> well, it's right here in Honkyville. In 2019, the vanishing outer banks, the vanishing outer banks, they will be the underwater banks soon enough. I'm going to put the link to this long, excellent story. I'm going to read about the first half of it. <clears throat> Coming out of <coughs> Ocracoke, North Carolina. I have been to Ocracoke, North Carolina years ago. All right. Take it away, Washington Post, to tell us how fucked we are. On any normal late fall day, the ferries that ply the 30 miles between Swan Quarter, which is on the coast, and this barrier island might carry vacationing retirees, sports fishermen, and residents enjoying mainland getaways after the busy summer tourist season. What do you want, little dog? You want to get back? You say, Pop, do you want? Do you want to go back over to the bed or what? Is that? Anyway, just settle down. <clears throat> but two months ago, Hurricane Dorian washed away all signs of normalcy here. After buzz cutting <coughs> The Bahamas, the giant storm, rolled overhead, raising a seven-foot wall of water in its wake that sloshed back through the harbor, invading century-old homes that have never before taken in water, and sending islanders such as post office master Celeste Brooks and her two grandchildren scrambling into their attics. Oracoke has been closed to visitors ever since. Island-bound ferries now carry yawning container trucks to haul back the sodden detritus of destroyed homes. And Ocockers, as they're called, are faced with a reckoning. Whether this sliver of sand crouched three feet above sea level between the Atlantic Ocean and the coast can survive the threats of extreme weather and rising sea levels. And if they can't, why rebuild? This is Aaron ba Dr. Aaron Baker, the only doctor to serve this community of a thousand people, talking about why rebuild if it's just going to you're just going to get knocked down again why sisyphus do you roll the uh, stone back up the hill quote that is the unspoken question that is what nobody wants to say it's a question of how do we continue to have life here close quote Scientists have long warned that Ocracoke's days are numbered, that this treasured North Carolina island is a bellwether for vast stretches of the U.S. coast. This is Michael Orbach, professor of marine affairs at Duke University. Quote, Virtually everyone from Virginia Beach, Virginia, south to the U.S.-Mexico border is going to be in the same situation in the next 50 years, and it is only going to get worse after that. So what he's talking about is uh, obviously the entire east coast of the uh, uh, stretching from Key West, Florida, all the way up to Chesapeake Bay is going to look like Ocracoke, 
North Carolina in the next 50 years, and it's only going to get worse after that. Even if Okra Coke's ultimate prognosis is grim, Tom Paul, the township's county commissioner, remains committed to its recovery. Quoting, uh, quoting Commissioner Paul, quote, Is this really sustainable? The answer is pretty clearly no. But what's the timeline? No one has been able to say you've got 15 years, 40 years, 100 years. The clear-eyed vision is resiliency then retreat, close quote. The disaster, meaning Hurricane Dorian, in some ways has shortened people's outlook. <laughs> yes, this is 64-year-old Monroe Gaskill. Quote, I don't think we're thinking that far ahead right now. Yes, uh, whether the island, oh, okay, the quote ends in right now. I don't think we're thinking that far ahead right now, said Monroe Gaskill, uh, talking about the immediate concerns of many old-timers. Whether the island will be open in time for duck hunting season later this month, where students will study next semester, and what will become of all the displaced residents who are now holed up in rental units once the tourists return next Easter. Even as some houses are being bulldozed, neighbors are already working together to elevate others. This is Janet Spencer, owner of the hardware store. Quote, Now I know there is no such thing as high enough. <laughs> yes, she and her husband jacked up their home 18 years ago. Just one cinder block too few to keep out Dorian. Yes, still, she said, Long-term residents will not leave. Quote, it's the only thing we know. This is Amy Howard, age 47, a local historian and craft store manager. She says, you know, there's hazards everywhere. Anywhere you live, you're going to deal with some hazard, like in Garfield, Texas. It's hurricanes. It's floods. It's trees falling on your fucking house. Something. It doesn't matter where you live. You're going to be dealing with something. So you might as well dig your heels in wherever you are. You know. Uh, <clears throat> she showed off the floorboards her great-grandfather cut out in 1933 to relieve pressure from mounting water. Uh, the building was raised in 1944 after a storm then, and her father now plans to elevate it even further. Of course, my next-door neighbors, they are eight feet in the air, and there's a couple of houses down the street from me that are 16 feet in the air here in Garfield, Texas. <clears throat> okay. Uh, here is Alton Balance. Uh, resident Alton Balance has heard the call to retreat. Time to get off that island, one friend, an ocean scientist, told him. <clears throat> there may come a day when it's not feasible to continue here, Balance does concede, but for now, 
he is methodically stripping out the old family home and is installing his new electrical outlets waist high. Quote, it's easy for people in government and sometimes in the media to target a small place like this. So what is the government doing about this? <clears throat> the Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA, FEMA provided support for rebuilding roads and other infrastructure, but a recent decision by FEMA to deny residents individual assistance has provoked ire when so many other coastal communities received funding after hurricanes such as Sandy in 2012. FEMA said, you know, when it, when it denied assistance to individual homeowners here in North Carolina, FEMA said it provides funding only when state and local resources are overwhelmed, uh, which I guess they figured that the state of North Carolina could just foot the bill for this one. Um, North Carolina, Roy Cooper has signaled his commitment to rebuilding. There you go. But the Islanders' sense of injustice, you know, being uh, turned down by the federal government, reflects a broad dilemma, according to Rob Young, director of the Program for the Study of Developed Shorelines at Western Carolina University. And this is the lack of clarity about which parts of the nation's threatened shoreline can and should be protected? Uh, quoting Professor Young, quote, There is no clear national plan, so FEMA's decision comes across as arbitrary. While Young does not, I guess yet anyway, advocate mass migration, wetter storms are raising questions about using taxpayer money to rebuild coastal communities. Quote, at some point there is going to be a breaking point when the public sector is either not going to want or be able to afford to accept the risk, close quote, and this is exactly what I've been talking about. I think it was over there on Collapse Chronicles where I was reading a, you know, another story about the economic collapse that nobody is talking about. And that is when uh, the public blows the whistle on this bullshit uh, about either direct uh, taxpayer assistance through FEMA. You know, when these people's houses, like these houses in Garfield, get flooded. That people come in here, they buy houses knowing goddamn well they're on a floodplain, they buy a house next to another house jacked eight feet up in the air, and then go whining for a, for a taxpayer handout when their house gets flooded. Or there, there's that, there's they, they, you know, people are already getting fed up with that. And as we see here, FEMA is already starting to deny. Uh, these direct handouts. Then, of course, there's people unlike me who have flood insurance underwritten by the federal government. So, yeah, I mean, these insurance companies uh, do still write flood insurance policies uh, because 
they have the U.S. taxpayers, you know, left holding the bag uh, ultimately. And whenever the U.S., uh, you know, whenever the government stops backing up uh, these millions of flood insurance policies, you are going to see, my guess, uh, my guess probably in the trillions of dollars uh, of real estate that are the you, you know in in floodplains and like what happened in in her you know just south of me in Harvey you no know, thousands of those homes that flooded in Harvey were not even in floodplains so they had no flood insurance and at some point the uh, the taxpayers are, are going to say enough of this bullshit. Uh, that, that, you know, you made your own bed, go lie in it. And this is why I'm getting the hell out of Garfield, Texas, because I know damn well that uh, this is going to happen. And when that happens, you will see a, uh, an economic collapse that's going to make what happened in 2008 look like a bad hair day. And uh, we are going to see how, how fucked we are. And this is just a prime example of, of what this collapse is, is going to look like to honky. What's going on in, in North Carolina today is going to be going on in Garfield, Texas. Uh, I don't want to say tomorrow because i got to get the fuck out of here. Uh, this house goes up for sale in three months. I got three more months to out, uh, to wait out the, uh, IRS. But anyway, I'm going to put the link. Let's just jump to the bottom of this long, involved snapshot of our future. And we're going, uh, to wind up back with Dr. Baker. Uh... You know, Dr. Baker is now monitoring patients' stress levels at the mobile clinic shipped in from the mainland to replace her own flooded facility. And she's reminding people that when uh, Dorian actually made it to North Carolina, this was a category one hurricane by the, you know, it, it lost its punch when it was taking out the Bahamas. She and Dr. Baker is reminding us that uh, what happened in North Carolina was what happened from a category one hurricane. Do your own uh, doomsday prophecy. Quoting Dr. Baker, quote, the hard part hasn't started yet. There is a whole new level of fear for those who stay. Close quote. A whole new level of fear and uh, I for one don't need a whole new lever level of fear so I am getting the fuck out of Garfield, Texas so I can go move to my little shack on the floodplain in Texas and get, uh, I mean in New York, and get to building my little cabin uh, up on the hill to get my ass out of the floodplain in New York. Uh, anyway guys, we're, we're, we're fucked. The handwriting is on the wall. But uh, <clears throat> I gotta wrap up this uh, we are so fucked, uh, Doomer headline of the day, and since it is too windy, I have got to get out there and do this burn pile from hell, but uh, since I don't have any fire insurance on this house either, <coughs> I'll just have to wait for a calmer day to light the burn pile from hell, but I'm going to go out and uh, see if I can get some sleep in the warm 84 degree sunshine. Uh, wish me luck 
on getting some sleep tonight because uh, I just have a bad feeling your old bipolar collapsitarian has a bad feeling about what's coming down the pike. You know, when you, when you live with shit like bipolar or whatever, you can actually feel it coming on. And uh, you guys will get to experience Sambone either in a major depression or a major manic episode, and that could be fun. That right now, we are so fucked. Bye, guys.